Bonjour from Paris Longchamp. The sun is shining down on us here for the Qatar Pre de l'Arc de Triomphe weekend. And what a weekend we have ahead of us. We're going to be taking you through some of the Breeders' Cup contenders who are hoping to take their French success into Californian glory. Now, it's also been very busy over in the USA. So let's get you up to speed. Welcome to Rundown with Rosie, episode four. and I'm here in Paris because Longchamp hosts five win and you're in races. Irish mare Tanawa, British sprinter glass slippers and the mighty Enable have all used this as a springboard to Breeders' Cup success. Now we've had many memorable moments this weekend so let's catch you up on all the action. and this year did not disappoint. An unbeaten horse and quite frankly, France's very own flight line. But this one held all the aces. The, the story about today was to uh, figure out if he was a very good horse or, or a champion. He's obviously a champion. L'Arc de Triomphe, le Qatar prix de l'Arc de Triomphe, 2400 mètres à parcourir, c'est S-Impact. S-Impact de plus en plus fort, il fait quelque chose d'assez extraordinaire ici, qui remporte sa sixième victoire consécutive et l'Arc de Triomphe. When you have a, a horse like him with a so strong acceleration in three five steps, he was the winner of the race. You know, I respect uh, always uh, the, owner's, the owner's choice and uh, it's not a problem. It is coming. It's another challenge which is not easy. So if they want to risk, we'll risk together. witness an incredible performance from Highfield Princess. What a dream horse she has been. She just never disappoints and she has just stamped her ticket to the Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint. La 
sixième, le prix de l'abbaye de longchamp Longine, le numéro 4, cœur de pierre, a été déclaré non partant. La grande favorite, Highfield Princess, sa prête qui vient accompagner ensuite et à l'extérieur par Pontos avec Highfield Princess qui est là également. Alors que le numéro 5, équilatéral, est pour l'instant très mal chanceux. De mieux en mieux, Highfield Princess qui attaque à la fin. Highfield Princess. So all my family and my grandchildren, everybody was here, um, and we all agreed that about quarter to six tonight we'd start discussing her future. Family discussion, and I loved, loved, great to be able to have it. The Santa Anita track is um, quite challenging, everybody tells me. My instinct is that she's as good as ever, and I would be inclined to think of going on running her. Fancy seeing you here. I'm here. Pretty You're here. Lag day. You're here. This has been a special one for you. Absolutely. But 2018, slightly more special. Anything special happened that year? Well, the mighty neighbour won the Prix de l'Arc and the Breeders' Cup. The only horse to have done the double, the Arc and the Breeders' Cup. Enable, she's done it! What a feat from an incredible team. Well done, Team Enable. Don't take mine and Frankie's word for it. I think her performance speaks for itself. The big expectation was Enable trying to become the first Arc de Triomphe winner to win a Breeders' Cup race in, in the same year. She came out of Longchamp in tremendous form and going to Churchill was, was certainly the main option. They're off in the Breeders' Cup turf. I was a bit further back than I wanted to be, uh, but from the bend to the back straight I was full wide. The pace was on straight away and I was trying to get off the fence and I managed to get up, fought off the fence and then she was moving good again. And they're into the stretch and the two fillies are one, two, magical and enable. It's these two, one, two, down to the finish. Well, obviously magical took me on pretty early. Then I thought, well, he's, he's a punch up now, so he was the best. She's a magnificent filly with great mental strength and uh, sh she showed the courage today. It's simply a miracle that she's here, let alone to win the arc and then to come here and do it. It's very much down to the, f the filly and the man who bred her. Prince Carly was a huge supporter of the Breeders' Cup and he loved the Breeders' Cup from, from the word go and so he was always terribly keen that his horses should compete if they were good enough to, to go. He took enormous pleasure over his homebreds, enormous pleasure and to see them win at the highest level is what he always came into the sport to do. Racing royalty, Enable and Frankie de Torre. The art winner is the Breeders' Cup turf winner too! Dare we be greedy and expect to see her again next year after what she's achieved? <laughs> say yes, I'll say it for you, yes. Mr. de Torre has three children going to college. He'd be very keen. <laughs> she stays in training. From one incredible racetrack to another, none is more beautiful in autumn than last year's Breeders' Cup host Keeneland. And the October meets see some of the biggest stars turn up, and this year did not disappoint. A tried and tested route to the Breeders' Cup Championships, Keeneland hosted eight win and your ins. Let's get the rundown. Buku, what a tremendous stretch rally. Buku, Martin Garcia to win the Jessamine. Hoist the gold. Nakatomi, Bango in between horses. Hoist the gold. Candied, VB Stream. One, two, deep stretch. Candied, Luis Saez wins the Darley Alcibiades. 
Wicked Halo and you, Gary. These two down to the line. Head bobbing photo for the win. Locked the wine steward. It is locked to win the Claiborne Breeders Futurity for Jose Ortiz. Master of the Seas. Up to the mark is there. Master of the Seas. Head bobbing photo. Floron Giroux aboard. Idiomatic to win the grade one. Judmont Spinster. Noted, canned group at the wire. Head bobbing photo for the win. As you know by now, we have had top level win annual inns here in Europe. The highlights being here and in Newmarket, but the Americans have been very busy too. Coast to Coast action galore with this year's Breeders' Cup host Santa Anita featuring a Breeders' Cup classic prep in the Awesome Again Stakes, most notably used as a stepping stone by Accelerate before his classic triumph in 2018. Track. Slow down Andy by two, over defunded. It pays to be Calbred. Slow down Andy on his way to the Breeders' Cup Classic. It is Timberlake who's gonna win the grade one champagne. And he drew away at the end to win by four. 16th to go, three witches driven out. Mary Quite Contrary running out of time. Here's the wire. It's three witches to win the Princess Rooney. But Zozo's finishes strong and wins it by a length on the wire. And Master of the Seas racing away with Enrico Wood by Mala. Most impressive display. It's Master of the Seas, a dominant win. Scores by almost four lengths to Shirl Spite. Battle on as they hit the 16th pole. Cody's Wish now edges clear. And Cody's Wish back to sprinting, back to winning today. Cody's Wish has his pick of two races now after his win in the Vosberg. He's joined by Hoist the Gold in the sprint. A busy month for the juvenile as Timberlake, Locked and Muth paved their way to the World Championships. France's unbeaten ace impact strengthens what is already looking like a scintillating Breeders' Cup turf. Despite his narrow loss at Keeneland, Master of the Seas finds himself in the fan duel mile due to his Canadian success. Will he get revenge on Up to the Mark? Will Highfield Princess finally get her Breeders' Cup glory this year in the turf sprint? Her run in the Abbey surely set down a marker. Oh, I tell you what, we were talking months and now we are talking just weeks until the Breeders' Cup Championships at Santa Anita. But before then, we still have two more win and your ins at Champions Day at Ascot. If you want to keep up with all things Breeders' Cup, then head to breederscup.com forward slash challenge. Or if you want to be there, then head to breederscup.com forward slash tickets and I'll see you in California. <laughs>